exactly. you know, you, you can't tell them that, oh, don't do that because your chances are like, you don't tell your kid, man, no point in playing football, yeah, you're dude. Never There's gonna no be chance. <laughs> you, you got zero chance, man. Nobody in your family's done it. Nobody that looks like you's done That's it. That's funny. No, Nobody we tell our kids. <laughs> Like, cut it out now. Put the ball down, son. Go to school. Nah. And some do, but for the most part, you encourage people to like try and get better at something. Good morning, good evening, good night, good afternoon. Don't give me copyright flag though. No, no, no. You can you can cut this out. I sounded like a zombie. Oh. Just <laughs> yeah. In order to grow, you gotta have like some kind of goals. Good morning. Good evening. Good night. Good afternoon. Whatever time you're listening in, wherever you're listening from. Shout out to my Spotify listenership, Apple and Google Podcasts, and YouTube. If you're watching in, thanks for giving me a reason to get dressed. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here. Be present and recognize that it's now right now. Whether you're right now is working, flying, running, driving. Be thankful we're alive, baby. Failure can be frightening. However, as Winston Churchill reminds us, success is all about going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. This is I Will Not Lose podcast where we set out to prove everything is learned from failure and we must persevere and recognize it as one step closer to success. I'm your host, Tony Ortiz. Let's jump right in. Oh, so I wasn't paying attention. My bad. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. So we got Angel, also known as Director Hitman. Yes, sir. Uh, in the building. Yes, sir. Been doing videography for a while. Long time. Switch into the content creation lane. So you have a couple of different <laughs> shows and yes, sir. Uh, different types of media, reaction videos. I see you in a couple different lanes. So Yeah, I was... Uh... I do a bunch of things when it comes to content creation, you know, trial and error, and just trying different things to go, you know, viral, or at least try to. So it's a big game out there when it comes to content creation, especially when it comes to that style of content creation. You know what I mean? So, definitely. It's fun. There's a few content creators in the area, and mm-hmm. then you definitely rank in terms of reach and engagement and stuff. I know you've had a couple things that go viral. And the thing with the viral game, you know, people would love to listen to this podcast and hear from you. Mm. How do you go viral? That's what everybody wants to know. But it's not the stuff that you plan. No, you, you, the things that people tell you went viral, it's never the things you plan or think that's going to go viral. It's always the thing you wouldn't think would go viral. And, you know, the recipe it varies. You know what I mean? Like I tell people all the time, the main thing is just trying to keep creating content, but you know, keep posting, the keep posting, you know, that's like the main step, figure out yeah. something and post or at least try to every day. Because like I tell people, it's kind of like, <clears throat> You're like feeding a machine. You know what I mean? As many videos as you can like stack up and keep posting, 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 eventually one of them is going to catch momentum depending on what you're doing and you can go viral, but it is a job. You know what I mean? As a lot of people are learning as they're getting paid, they're like, man, this is taking a lot of time out of my day. Well, that's the point. It's a job, Facebook or YouTube or TikTok. They want you to sit there all day and post, you know what I mean? So (laughs) it's a job, y'all, but if you want to do it, do it, you know, try. (laughs) Yeah, I think it's uh, it's rewarding. It's fun. It's it's like in 2024, you have all these different ways to make income, like even if you're driving Lyft or DoorDash, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like where you can kind of set your own schedule. Exactly. And then people find out with that, oh, man, I can't just do this a couple of days a week and pay rent. Like nope. that's a job, you too. Gotta, Every Everything's a hustle, man. You're going to be out there dashing every, every day. <laughs> you want to pay some rent by the end of the month. You know what I mean? And nothing comes easy. That's the thing is like... With these little, um, with these app jobs and things like that, you know, people think it's easy, but you remember a job's a job, man. You know what I mean? And uh, to make success of like any other job, you got to work, you know? So if everything was easy, we'd all be millionaires, right? You know, it's a grind out there, but stick to it. So, (laughs) no, for sure. So let's go over some of the different kind of content you put out. I've seen recently like the hit or dismiss food reviews. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I started that uh, probably 2022, probably um, just messing around with reels, just posting 
just, you know, just going crazy, doing little snacks and stuff I'd find at the dollar store, you know, little stupid little snacks and stuff like that. I started yeah. with that and then I kind of transitioned to uh, restaurants. I ain't going to lie. Recently, I kind of slowed down. I don't really have the time to go do it like I used to, but it's fun, man. I really enjoy that type of stuff. You know, that's the kind of content I like creating, you know, just eating, telling people, you know, how I feel about it and stuff like that. Yeah. And you would figure, you know, because I'm an older dude, you know, that's what a lot of people think too. People think you got to be 18, 17 to go viral, but anybody who knows the internet knows there's people 85 Five years old who are yeah. making money you know what I mean it's a different world out here so that's another thing too I think a lot of people who are like in my age brag I'm, I'm 44 so I think a lot of people get like up in 35 and older they start to feel like oh you know I can yes you can you can do anything you want to do if you're person you know if you have the personality to do it do it you know what I mean like don't let your age define what you can do out there definitely want to say that to people <laughs> Yeah. No, you, you can't let the age define, you can't really let anything be a defining factor. You know, anything you look at as a handicap is kind of like if you like the first thing you do of anything is going to suck, you know, like <laughs> I put a, a ton of time. I actually, I designed another logo and then I ran updates on my computer and I mm. lost it. Oh. And like, I didn't have a version of it. I didn't have anything, it's, but it had like, it had the microphone and wings coming out. It was like, it was oh, dope. That so I fun. was like, but I wanted to record. So I was like, all right, I got to do another one right now. I knew it was going to be a grind getting into podcasting, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. Original, it was like therapy for myself. That's the other content I wanted to talk about mm -hmm. is you, your podcast. Uh, I ain't going to lie, man. Thanks to the gentleman in front of me, uh, I kind of started, um, oh man, I don't even, look, I, I haven't done it in three months. Uh, damn, I forgot the damn name of it already. <laughs> yeah, I was going to uh, ask um, what's the name. Uh, unground, uh, Ungrounded, damn. Ungro Uncommon Grounds. Uncommon Grounds podcast, yeah. So um, I started that because of you when I saw this podcast, and I remember you told me about the website, you know, and, you know that, that podcasting website, and I basically... Grabbed the little, you know, USB mic, plugged it up to my phone. And I started yeah. talking to myself, basically. But it was like therapy for me, man. And uh, I did about five episodes. And um, I was starting to get hits in, like, Netherlands. You know, the, the, the web website yeah. shows you, like, where the countries are. Yeah. So I was getting hits in, like, Russia, like, you know, all <laughs> these other places but America. So I started laughing to myself. I said, well, I guess in other countries, they want to hear these little nutty, nutty American stories that I'm that I'm yeah. that I'm telling on this podcast. But it's dope, man. It was definitely like a little therapy session for me. But I definitely got like to the point where it's like now I feel awkward now. I'm telling my whole personal life to the world. And it's like easier with somebody in front of me, you know, to engage in the conversation. I just felt like I was just spewing my soul, you know what I mean, to the world. But but it sparked it was, conversation. I definitely hit you up on Messenger. I was like, I, I listened to this. Uh, you know, people hear it and you never know what little part exactly. someone can connect with. Like, <clears throat> it's uh, it's nuts. So, it yeah, it could be therapy for yourself. It could be just talking about for me. I was like, I want to have the mentality of like success, learn from failure. Like I, if I could just prove like spinning content spinning interviews that way towards that direction i'm mm -hmm. like that's going to be good for me it's like talk therapy it's true and then it became almost like an addiction i'm like <laughs> let me grab this little piece here and let me go here and i think it's completely all right for people to invest in hobbies like some people fish you know what i yeah, mean and like true. Yeah, there's some people that feed their family and all they do is fish. But for the most part, you're buying lures and rods and you have three yeah, different you're just rods the game and different reels. <laughs> yeah, like you're, you, you know, so uh, that's what I look at as, you know, I don't have a ton of other hobbies that cost a, a fortune. So right. I'm going to grab some stuff and then um, it leads to a skill that you can use like i'm sure you've become a better editor just mm -hmm. by doing stuff with the audio and doing yeah. stuff with like uh cutting for social like a lot That's of true. a lot of videographers struggle to go from the horizontal format to the nine by 16 it's true it's true i i actually enjoy it man because like in my world i'm almost like it took half the problem away you know what i mean <laughs> like flipping that camera to go straight up and down is almost like okay now i just need to focus on the center part of the grid of my camera now and it almost made it easier for me even when editing wise i could chop you know slide something to the side now it's like what was on the far right now i can just center it and use it for the reels and yeah. stuff like that so it's definitely i enjoy it it makes life easier and i even noticed like you know tim from we live tv 
Yeah, he started yeah. shooting music Shout videos. Tim Foster. Yeah, Tim Foster. Shout out to you, bro. Um, he's part of he's part of my nonprofit, Move Moves Media. Shout out to you, bro. Um, he um, started shooting music videos like that recently, and he actually put a post. He was like, "Man, all the years I used to." you know, be talking trash about that style of editing, but he actually enjoys it because it, it, it's a different, you know, it's a totally different style, different edit. You know what I mean? It's, it's fun. It's fun. I like it. And I feel like it gets <clears throat> the engagement. Like you can't ask the viewer to change. You can't ask them to turn their phone sideways. Like <laughs> people just, even if they have to do two clicks, right. You know what I mean? Right, like, I used to go and put the the video in the comments and try to have a whole link. It's, it's too much work. Don't, like it's too much for people. They don't want to do all that. They just no. want to click once and Boop, everything's right there, man. That's why I just started putting the video out to like, uh, you could upload long form videos to Facebook. People yes. don't know that. Yes, like, you can. Mm-hmm. You know, and they they pay the best monetize wise. So I'm like, look. Mm-hmm. Keep people engaged longer, right? Everybody wants to have a ton of views on the YouTube channel where you see the video where it's like you're here. But if you have it where the viewer can consume the content in the way they want to on the mm-hmm. platform they mm-hmm. want to. You know what I mean? Whether, you know, I always say shout out to my Google, Apple podcasts, you know, everywhere. Stitcher. It, it, it's true, man. Um, that's something I had to learn too. I was big on many years on my business page. I didn't realize I used to try to use Facebook as a tool to move YouTube. That's just, They don't want that. You know, Facebook is not like, we're not here to promote YouTube. We're here to keep you locked in the Facebook. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, So that's something I had to learn over time too. Just focus on each platform, treat them each one separately. You know what I mean? You can post the same content, but treat them all differently because they are different. You know what I mean? Instagram, the Facebook, the YouTube, all of it. You know what I mean? So I definitely got you when it comes to that type of stuff. (laughs) I want to get my LinkedIn game up, but... Ah, LinkedIn, like, man. That's a, whew, man, that's a game right there, man. That <laughs> I used to post crazy on LinkedIn all the time. And to be honest, at the time I was posting on LinkedIn, I probably wasn't ready for LinkedIn. You know what I mean? I was just posting like yeah. hardcore rap videos and stuff. And, and that's cool. But at the time I was treating LinkedIn like Facebook. You yeah. can, but you got to remember it's, it's professionals there, man. So like me as a videographer or a cinematographer, whatever you want to call me, you know, it's probably best to promote like my music fest clips, my WDIY clips, you know, rather than mm-hmm. like some gangster rapper from second street in Allentown rapping on LinkedIn. It's probably better to show more business <laughs> yeah, side you know yeah, what I mean? to get yeah. more business. No disrespect to the kid on second, but you know, when it comes to business, that's how yeah. it goes, man. Business people want to see business stuff from nine out of 10 <laughs> to give you a for job. Sure, for sure. <laughs> I had, um, I've, I'm definitely guilty of like uh marketing, the hip hop, like crossing, I've, I've kind of blended my style to be a lot more. I don't want to say like global. I don't even want to say corporate, but it's more like uh, it's less niche. Like exactly. it, it works for a broader audience, you know. That's what I did too. I was promoting um, hip hop. Nothing against hip hop. I love hip hop. Hip hop got me viral. Hip hop started everything for me, and I still shoot videos. But yeah, the thing I noticed was you're only going to get the target. You're only going to get the target focus on you that you're promoting. So if I kept promoting rappers, of course, I kept getting rappers. But now that I'm promoting the school district and sports and stuff like that, I have a whole man. I can't tell you guys how how things have changed for me since I've been working with the school district and stuff like that. Um, it just opens your eyes, you know, to, to kind of understand business in general. Um focus on things that matter more than the things that we think matter that actually don't push the meter. Um, just keep your, you know, just keep, that's kind of like you said, just, just, I don't know, man. (laughs) I mean, I'm kind of lost for words, but it's a resume. It's like people, I don't go too crazy. I mean, it's a full-time job promoting the podcast. You know, mm-hmm. I love it. The The best thing is when the interview goes off and people share the interview or comment. And then you see like, Oh, yo, this got 11 shares. Like, is that a good feeling? Even though, even though <laughs> Facebook doesn't want to push it because it's taking no. them to YouTube. Exactly. They're, they're jacking the algorithm up for me. It's exactly. like, that's always definitely cool. But when people do discover it, they could go back and see, 
years worth of content. Mm -hmm. And, you know, somebody told me the other day, as much as I post to Facebook, they said, I didn't know you had a podcast. You know, I was like, well, if you didn't know I design, you didn't know I do a podcast. Like, I'm just not. Did you know I had kids? Did you know I had kids? You know, I'm married. Do you know what my name is, man? Yeah, for sure. For sure. So I think like, uh, like on my LinkedIn, I have a great resume of different stuff that I've worked on. And, Mm -hmm. you know, but. It, it depends on there, like what you're trying to sell. Yeah, exactly. What are you trying to target? Like what, what is your purpose of being on LinkedIn? You know what I mean? Like, are we promoting? Are we trying to get a job? Are we doing a mix of it, of, of the both? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. I may go and give uh, like free knowledge away. Like I've been itching to just give away like free content. I've been uh, recording myself designing just so I could grab little clips of like, here's the, here's the flavor. You know what I mean? Like, here's what you do. And then even up. when I'm, even when I'm posting the podcast and editing it and stuff uh-huh. like that, it's like giving people an idea, like people mm-hmm. get vested. Mm-hmm. I asked the other day, audio or video podcast. Now I asked the same question like a year, year and a half ago. Is there a difference? Uh, like, like what do people say? What, what, what do they prefer? It was overwhelmingly video the mm-hmm. second time. The mm-hmm. first time it was 50-50. Okay. The first time I asked a lot of people are like, well, I like to work or do the dishes mm-hmm. while I'm listening just to listen. my podcast. Mm-hmm. So I just throw it into audio. Mm-hmm. Even if I go to YouTube to get it, I'm just listening. listening. I'm not mm-hmm. watching. Got you. This time everyone's like, yo, I need to see it. Like it's got to be 4K. <laughs> it's got to, you know what I mean? Like the 8K resolution, yeah. man. No, no. Um, they didn't go crazy like that, but they did. Everybody definitely said video. And even if not, they said both. Like I do both, but mm. <clears throat> video is not out of the question. You go to some groups online and they're like, oh, a podcast has to be audio or traditionalists and stuff like that. It's like it, it creates an experience. Like some people do like it's like they're sitting here mm-hmm. having the comment. They want to reply. And then that's what the comments and exactly. stuff are for. Exactly. You know, when I'm listening to your podcast, mm-hmm. I'm thinking, mm-hmm. man, you know, some of the topics you covered, like a single parent family versus a two parent mm-hmm. family. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, different things the deep dive that i'm like okay i can listen to this in my headphones it is like i'm having a conversation right with that person and i did this a ton of times off camera like Mm. just sitting down with people and getting to know like hey you did this you did that and that's always my goal is to try to benefit like how can i refer people to you okay you like Mm. doing documentaries you might like that other than this you Mm. know i'll Mm. Hire Tim for this because yeah. we need this look. Yeah, you exactly. Know? Everybody and has so, their own styles, right? <clears throat> yeah. So knowing more in depth, like, okay, you're a videographer. Do you want to do weddings in Princeton? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> is that is that your gig? You always have to to do it. But right. you no, know? yeah. No, nah, I'm look. I'm the type of person. I'm, I tell people. I'll, oh, people always laugh. I'm always like, I'm like the McDonald's of this stuff, man. Look, I don't care who's pulling up. You know, you need a wedding. I'm there. You need this. I'm there. I'm like, I'm like a Swiss Army knife <laughs> of, of, with a camera, man. Pictures, video. I don't care what it is, man. I can create it or do it, man. That's like my thing. Uh, I try to stay like that, universal, man. <laughs> but that's the thing too. It's like, uh, okay, let's say if, if I'm posting five different things, I do. I do sports photography. I do wedding photography. I do this and do that. It's Let's say for you, let's say if your person doesn't know me, is that overwhelming to an outside person looking in when you're doing different stuff? Do you think like people should stay in one, not staying, but like, you know, if I say I'm a wedding photographer, should I just keep posting that like uh, to an outside person? Do you think it gets confusing when like a business has multiple things? Uh, yeah, the way to do it. And this is my honest response. Mm-hmm. Like I do full out content creation. Mm-hmm. I can create a video motion graphics. I can create your logo, your brand, how that mm-hmm. applies to a vehicle wrap. Mm-hmm. But if I'm standing there in my introduction and telling you all that, yeah, it sounds overwhelming. Mm-hmm. You know, it's true. even uh, if I say content creator, that opens the door for what kind of content creator. Exactly. If I say I'm Tony Ortiz, the designer, mm-hmm. it's like, oh, okay. What do you design? Design, And you can have the conversation then and 
there's times where I've worked with clients. They've literally hired me. There's money going back and forth. And then they find out I do something else mm. like, oh, you okay. do so one door's open in the other. Basically. Yeah. Once they once they get into the first door, I guess is what you're saying. Well, people will say <clears> something <throat> to you. They'll be like, wow, you do a lot. That's their way of saying, like, you know, like, you know, like, what do you what are you really good at? But no, um, as long as one thing leads to another, like I'm not going to be building fish tanks under Tony Ortiz, the designer LLC. You know what the I design, mean? Like, designing fish tanks. You know, that's the the fallback, and I've been public about that. Like that's the fallback, fallback, fallback. If nobody's buying content anymore and nobody will work with me, you know, there's uh there's always some sort of hustle. But of course, um, no, there's. Uh, you were on the hip hop. I wanted to talk a little bit about the hip hop music awards oh, and man. you did all the video for that. Mm -hmm. um, we had Mike on here talking about it, like uh seven, 70, 80 videos or something <laughs> like that. What was that process like? Uh, that was a headache, man. Shout out to moving moves media. Shout out to Michael Facetto. Um, that's our nonprofit. And um, we did the 50th anniversary of hip hop awards at arts quest last November, I think, or October. October, I think. Um, and uh, I took the job of being the video man or the person creating. I When I took the job, I, I don't think I kind of... I, I took the job because I never did anything like that. So I was like, well, let me step in. I'm the type of... I'm a Capricorn, man. I'm very, I'm very tedious about what I'm doing. Yeah, me too. And that was Capricorn. You Capricorn? Yeah. Oh, I'd say, hey, there, there we go. So... I was, I wasn't comfortable. I never did anything like that. So I wasn't really comfortable of jumping out the window, but something in my heart was like, bro, you're never going to progress if you don't try, if you don't do this. I was just more stressed because I know where, where the venue was at. I know if I messed it up, I messed up the whole show. So I was, it was, it was yeah. very stressful for me. Um, but like Michael said, he's like, well, you're the guy for it because I, I guess I'm good at handling a lot of stress. So it was tedious work, man. Um, it was just a headache, but I got it done. <laughs> Many videos, a lot of chopping, um, a lot of graphics. And even like you said, you even said, like, hey, man, you do motion graphics. Remember in the, in yeah, the yeah, message? Yeah. I was like, no. I was like, no. He was like, well, what was all this stuff you did at the Hip Hop yeah. Awards? Yeah. I was like, video clips. He's like, bro, that's motion graphic. I was like, oh, well, I guess I do do motion graphics. Yeah. Look, I'm jumping into stuff. I didn't even realize what I was doing, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? But... It, it was fun. It was fun. And I'm just, you know, and when the show ran, we did have a little glitch or two in the videos, you know, with sequencing, but it is what it is. You know what I mean? Um, it was a big show, but we pulled it off, man. And um, yeah, it I, didn't ruin the show. It by didn't any ruin means. the show. It wasn't like, what just happened? You know, it kind of, the flaws were noticeable to me probably because I'm the one who, who put all the videos together. Maybe most people didn't notice them, but you know, it was good for what we did. And I'm, I'm still appreciative for the opportunity. You know what I mean? It was definitely a blessing. I might have to do it again. I just got a message the other day, so he might be bringing it back. So I don't mind though, man. That was definitely a great experience. So I guess my message would be to people out there is don't let your mind defeat you, man. Um, if you really can't do something, I'm not going to say jump out the window and make yourself look like a fool. But if you're kind of nervous to do something that you know you have the capability to do, Try to do it, y'all, because you never know what door that could open up. Because even after the show, um, somebody from Lehigh Valley Health Network was like, who did all the video for the show? They were talking to Michael. And they were like, we'd like to have a meeting. You know, maybe they could do some work with us. Da, da, da. So you never know the doors um, that'll open up, you know. Take every opportunity you can, if you can. Because I definitely missed a lot of them in life, man. So go out there and get yours, y'all. You know, don't let life pass yeah. you by thinking too damn much. <clears throat> for sure, for sure. Mm -hmm. And it's really not too late. There's people that there's a ton of people that started at 34, 35. That, that's that are the thing about, known for something now. Exactly. It's like me. Like I, I, I basically worked in a restaurant basically all my life besides stupid stuff when I was young. And um I left that about six years ago. Did this video content creation full time ever since. You know what I mean? So it's kinda like you know, when you get to the point you could do it, I always tell people, do it if you can. You know, don't ruin your life. Don't ruin your kid's life. Don't ruin your family. Don't get kicked out yeah. your house, you know, jumping out of windows. You, you know, just make sure you're stable enough to make the next step, I guess, in so many words when it comes to, you know, doing what you want to do. It doesn't have to be content creation, just your dreams in general. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got, you got like uh, <clears throat> three to five hours 
let's say you work eight hours in a day, Mm -hmm. you know, now that takes stamina. I'm not even going to lie. Like you gotta, you gotta (laughs) eat right. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? You gotta make sure you sleep. Mm -hmm. Like you can't just be there tired, (sighs) grinding, like, especially if it's coming to creating maybe, maybe some sort of mindless stuff. Yeah. And then you do exercise on top of that to keep your energy up. But you got three to five hours, even let's say two Mm -hmm. every day after work that you put towards something else, towards a hobby or whatever, you know, you're chipping away at. Right. Mm -hmm. People watch TV. You know what I mean? And like people don't understand how much time there is like nobody. There's apps that can tell you how long you're watching TV (laughs) or any stuff like that. But people don't normally do that sort of analyzing, like be surprised how much time we burn BS and all day, you know, for some people watching TV five hours a day, you know, you know what you can do in five hours. And then there's people out there that like feels like 24 hours is not enough. Those are like true grinders, man. When you're like, I need 28 hours in a day, mm-hmm. you're probably working most that day. You know what I mean? Um, even with myself, man, I abuse time a lot uh, in my younger days, you know, taking it for granted. But as you get a little older, you know, oh, people, as you get older, man, you know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. as you get older, you start to appreciate time. You do understand time. You know what I mean? Um, and I guess why I tell people, don't waste it, man. <laughs> One day you could turn around and regret it, man. Time is all we got. Besides family and, you know, stuff like that, you know what I mean? But time is literally all we got. Sure, for sure. (laughs) You know, I do a lot to keep my mentality good, whether it's, uh, you know, promoting positivity through the podcast or Mm -hmm. just saying like uh, there's times I want to. I want to play video games. You know what I mean? Like, I just want to chill, but I'm like, all right, I got these podcast clips to cut and I know I'll feel better afterwards, Mm -hmm. you know, or I'll be like, okay, 20 minutes. And then I've got this stuff to do, but I I can't remember the last time I was just like, all right, I got like five, six hours to just, (laughs) cause you know, I've done that in my, in my twenties. There's times if you think about what you did during your twenties, it's like you were with your and gaming was different back then. Like you guys all went over to each other's house. Like yeah. you might have connected multiple TVs, yeah. the multi ports. You brought your controller and stuff. Like you little memory packs. You kids don't know nothing about that. <laughs> I remember the the Rumble packs, yeah. Rumble packs, N sixty four, and all that. <laughs> No, in the same world that you could connect and play video games and do all this, you could do that same thing with content creation, you know? Exactly. I'm getting ready to take this show live a little bit, you know? Yeah. uh, This would have been cool if we had the the live going, but... People probably would have been commenting. That would have been cool, right? Yeah. But uh, I have the tech. I have the computer and everything right there to do it it's just you gotta jump in and i'm always like if i'm gonna take people's attention because i feel like like i first off i hate that highlight the ad highlight ad followers like i went in and turned mine off because it's like mine don't even work anymore i don't know where my ad followers went i guess i abused it too much they took it away from nobody me. nobody looks at those nobody reads I know. those people now it turned at first it was like oh what are they tagging me and then it's like man it's, they're spamming me to death now facebook just just gave you away if you know how it's like angels tagged with 96 other people that was a, and you're that like was a sneaky where way was to do it. where was i that 96 people that we were all there together was this at a concert or something you know i'll be honest i've never done that one day on facebook that is so annoying i hate when people do that don't force me to try to watch your content no, that's why I feel like if you go live, it's like, let me put the show. Let me turn the lights on. Let me have the audio real clean. Mm-hmm. Now, we did that. Shout out to Matt Mosley. Uh, Grayson. Grayson, that's my guy. Yeah, Shout out man. to Grayson, man. That's my dude Shout right there, man. We, we had him on. It was like late. I was like, we just need to check the mic. Uh-huh. And I had a bunch of back-to-back interviews. I'm like, <laughs> if we record this it's going to take me like a time. month to edit. So let's just um, go live. We'll have the conversation. I already text him. I'm going to have him back on now that I've had more time to digest the music and okay. put together more of an interview rather than us just, just talking, talking chat, chopping it up, you know? Mm-hmm. So that video is out there, but, um, how'd that go? Or how's it the, going? The video? The live. It went live. Is it still on? It's still yeah. out there. Yeah. yeah. I haven't checked analytics okay, okay. on anything, but some people jumped in, jumped in the comments and stuff. Yeah. Like you definitely got to go. If you go consistently at the same time, mm-hmm. I think people would definitely 
you know, I just randomly feel like going live. I try not to do that. Just like, yo, I feel like talking that shit. Like, you know what I mean? Just jump on the mic and do live. Because that might be somebody's first impression of the show. Exactly. You know? Exactly. And, you know, like, you know, they may not give it a chance if they think that this is just your first impression could be your last. It right? is. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And that's another thing about the Internet, too. Right. It's like, man, which version, you know, it's, it's like you say, you know, pe- people see the wrong version. They won't they won't even follow you anymore, man. And the Internet's a crazy spot, man. You know what I mean? It make you nervous even with your post sometimes. I mean, that's why I was posting crazy when I first started, because it's like. I got to see what's going to work, what's not going to work. Something got to work out there. For on sure. The internet. <laughs> but I'm it's glad wild. you let people know the reality that like it's a it's a job. No, I keep telling job, myself, man. I actually have it on my calendar for today. Mm. I'm going to go through my photo roll, take a bunch of stuff, put mm. together content, maybe edit little videos. Like I like doing that stuff and it helps me remember the times and mm-hmm. document it and put it on. But <clears throat> it's so much work. I also got a, a logo to turn over. So it's like, I, I, it's always an easy decision between making money or money. Go, like you got to look at it. How many hours would I have to put in before I monetize Facebook or YouTube to the point where it's making a little bit. Now that's great as an additional that's passive. A, that's a long-term goal. Yeah. But it's not, there's no fast money in that. You know, it's a grind. It's, you you know, it's a grind. I'd rather make the logo all day and put the social media stuff on the back burner because it's a it's a uh, I don't know. You you can go viral in a second, but it's technically a long term game. You know what I mean? Like you gotta yeah. work, man. Because even when you go viral, you gotta keep. Now you gotta keep posting to keep your viral status. That's the thing. People go viral and they think they're just gonna go viral forever. No, you're gonna go viral until that video dies and then you die with it. And it's we like had, that. Uh, you know, Alan EJ. Who? The world's fastest character artist. Uh, we had him on the podcast and he was post. He's got two million followers on YouTube, like really? three million on Facebook. Yeah. Wow. Like a total of like nine million everywhere. And wow. he draws characters uh, okay. of people. OK. You know, he draws them fast and puts little one minute, two minute videos. Oh, up. OK. Like clips um, together. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And there was one video he had. Uh-huh. And it went like 700, 800,000, but people had checked his other stuff. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then a bunch of people subscribed just from the one video, like it built his channel. Now exactly. he was posting for years, not just that sort of content, mm-hmm. but people, you know, I hate to say it, but even like a 14 or 15 year old that goes famous, like they're spending all their time after stool. They're doing what I'm telling you guys to do after work, like spending all their exactly. time putting together transition uh-huh. videos and stuff yep. and learning how to make content and what yep. goes with the algorithm. So exactly. it's like, exactly. you know, you, you can't tell them that, oh, don't do that because your chance is like, you don't tell your kid, man, no point in playing football. Yeah, dude. Never There's no chance. Yeah, you got zero. No chance, man. Nobody in your family's done it. Nobody that looks like you's done That's it. That's funny. No, Nobody we tell our kids. Ever done it. <laughs> <laughs> like, cut it out now. Put the ball down, son. Go to school. Nah. <laughs> and some do, but for the most part, you encourage people to like try and get better at something. Of you course. know, like uh, there's always a lesson learned, even if you don't go super far in something. Exactly. Like, exactly. I had. Uh, <clears throat> years as an audio engineer Mm -hmm. and then I went heavy with the design and I focused on one and I was like oh I missed out on all this with the audio engineer but then that experience came back when I'm doing the podcast you know everything sounds great full circle that's right you still utilize those skills doing something a little different but in the same world I'll do uh I had put out streams and like videos I I did stuff on YouTube I have another channel with my design and stuff but Mm. i don't post consistently like i don't create content for that that. That, Mm. that's something that i would do because i mean i already spend enough time posting podcast clips and cutting those up and i found a (laughs) system to be able to do that you know um so hey add to the stuff i i think it's fun and there's definitely a dopamine like people don't mm. talk about that enough like <laughs> it's like a drug man you're, it's, it's you're true. addicted to the red dots and so it's true man it's crazy how that works man it's almost like i don't i don't know you know because i'm older so i come from an era before well before good internet you know what i mean so it's kind of like it is like a drug man and i just think like you know, since I come from no internet, 
I always put myself in the shoes of like my daughter. I'm like, you know, she grew up in the internet world. All these kids are like addicted to that, man. And it's like, I, I, I do understand why. And then I just kept thinking to myself, imagine if I was born in this generation, I'd be probably 30 times worse than what I am now. Because even for somebody older, I'm on the internet more than most people my age. At, you know, tr- trust me, bro. I'm around people. They don't even know how to how yeah. do you uh, download. Look, I hate explaining people how to download a picture I send them. Like, come on, man. How can you be that technically technology? Yeah. You know, like, come on, man. Get with the times. But <laughs> a lot of people, I don't know, man. A lot of people, they just don't get with the time, man. But, um, nah, man. <laughs> do you spend a lot of time training with like AI? For different AI tools. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it, man. Um, AI's I don't want to be like change my life, man, but uh <laughs> AI <laughs> AI's help me, man, because I'm not I, I basically dropped out of school young, man. You know, I, I didn't even get I didn't even go to ninth grade was it, man. You know what I mean? Um so I'm I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm stupid. I'm not stupid, man, but I just I'm not you know, I can't write nice, beautiful you know, perfect paragraphs and all this other craps, man. So I basically, you know, put some ideas in AI and it helps me, you know, write stuff professionally because I'm dealing with professional people. And honestly, that's been the best thing I've done in a long time was implement AI within my business. Best yeah. thing I've ever done. Best thing I've ever done, man. Yep. Yep. Utilize that y'all. You don't have to use it for making pictures, you know what I mean? But if you're not the best, you know, person with words or, you know, you want to say something a certain way and you feel, you know, use AI for that chat, EB, you know, whatever, whatever they are, man, just use them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the yep. chat stuff, whatever. It's great. I love it. Personally. I, uh, I flipped it to a whole nother level. I would, I use it a lot. No, um, I sent it cause it, it has eyes. You can send it a picture and it can see what's in it. So I sent it a logo mm. and had it write me a creative brief and explained mm. why I use the colors, what the colors meant. And it was exactly what I would have wrote written. anyway. Like, you know what I mean? It just put it, it there, described but it I'm the way like, you would have described it. I'm like, that's crazy. It, it looked, it just looked at the logo and said what it is and explained explain that the arches i was like that's crazy it is crazy but, uh, yeah no i agree it, it helps to scale like at no other point like you either have time or you have money mm-hmm. like rarely do you not have either you know yeah, what i mean like <laughs> so if you have the money to do it all for you like you're in the producer role like pay somebody with the time mm-hmm. to, to do it. get it done right. but can now compound your time and it's almost like you're hiring other people under you to be able to help with writing or just take the things that you don't want to do. Right. Um, I use it a ton in like every aspect of the podcast. Like I wouldn't be able to drop consistently if it wasn't for AI, you Mm. know, and yeah, you could still do the stuff. And I get people who are like typos are a big deal now. Like, can't enter a world with no typos so they're like i'm gonna let you know i'm not using ai i was like that's that's cool like i can appreciate that but it's not going anywhere it's no. getting crazier it's just it's just get used to it y'all it's just gonna be implemented more in our lives in different aspects i'm sure man but um ai is here to stay from what i can see bro the uh i was using generative fill in photoshop so there's a picture of uh, Valerie Bittner with Alan E. J. Actually, this is a, a callback. I didn't even think of that, but he's in the picture. So I have to cut him out. Mm-hmm. And because he's like covering this half of her, her arm is gone. Yeah, this how part's do you missing. Feel the rest of the so, body back, right? <clears throat> so I just selected it. I said generative fill. What it, put it finished there? her dress. It put a glass in her hand. She was holding it like this. Like it, it yeah. I'll, I'll show you. I, I recorded my screen doing it because I was like, this is just super wild. And you didn't tell it to do that? You just let the, it just did it naturally. No, you can you can tell it. Yeah, to you do can something. prompt it. Like right. first, I just had it do it naturally. What then, like the cup, I circled the cup and I said, "Make it like a red liquid with whatever," yeah, and it tapping, swapped it out. It out. Yeah. And you could pick one of three of them yeah, or whatever. But mm-hmm. in an hour, I did a magazine cover out of two Photoshop pictures uh-huh. and some different food and stuff. Uh, the mm. entire kitchen that they're in is generated. It's like, uh, it's, it's 
not even to go and take the job of the designer. No. But people don't understand if you have a picture of someone and they're cut off just a little bit and you have like, uh, let's say you have a square picture and you uh, have a postcard that's a rectangle. Yep. Now you can't fill that. The exactly. old way used to be like you stretch, stretch it out. And pixelate everything, look terrible. <laughs> now you just highlight the empty space and, and you have it fill, fill it in. It. It'll fill people's clothes. It'll put belts on them and stuff. It's, it's all crazy. proportionate. and it's so. Crazy. It, it just helps with getting little stuff out to print. So I always fear a world of like, not like I, I'd hate not learning. Like I'd hate just being like, this is it. This is All it. the good music came out. There's no it's good TV with. shows. Like that just seems so like, like lonely where you just wait to die. Like I want to see. And, and I get it. I used to be a super traditionalist when it came to graphic design and mm-hmm. art. And I paid my dues and I figured out how to do stuff from scratch and right, stuff. Right. Well, that's a blessing too, though. But le- le- learning from scratch, you know, you, you know what it takes, man. You know? <laughs> yeah. Nobody want to pay for nobody that. Nobody want to pay for that. Nobody <laughs> want to pay for custom from scratch. You and their drawn stuff. It's like, <laughs> what can we go? So you just, you learn to manage the process. Yeah, true. That's what I think <clears throat> you, you know, you're, experience with music videos helps you manage the process of getting that done exactly so you know uh i worked on a music video and i worked on it over i mean it was a side project but i worked on it like over months like it's a lot of work Mm -hmm. even if i had two days to sit there and knock it out it probably would have been close to done there i mean we had like special effects like it was (laughs) it takes time y'all it's not that thriller app man the apps (laughs) the apps make us, uh, us us editors look bad man it was apps doing all these crazy effects that's going to take me literally 15 minutes to put in your music video the app does it in 0.2 seconds it's stupid out there but it's don't take time who sora sora s-o-r-a sora ai no what's that one i'm taking my phone off uh Airplay mode. It's a, Is that a the Google one? John. It's uh, a. It's from Google. It's mm. it's like Chat GPT for video? instead of words. It's for video. Yeah. I I don't know. I know there's one app. I I I haven't used it, but I just see a lot of editors use it. You know, it's like an AI app. You can throw like three seconds of your clip in, and it'll you know make it look all crazy for like. I've seconds. seen that where you give it a picture and you do something like that, but this one sounds. This one's crazy. You're about to show me. <laughs> Let's see. What yeah, this look is. at this. I'll see if I can actually. I don't know if I'll get copyright flagged if I throw it up, <laughs> so people can see what you're seeing. I don't know if you want to make it full screen. You got all the little tape, yeah. And they show the prompts. It's not out yet. It's this is in development. Oh, get out of here. Yeah, you see the reflections and stuff. <sighs> Now, if you look closely, the the hands might be a little messed yeah, up. You know, like, you know, AI is always like eight <laughs> fingers. That's like AI's thing. It's like eight fingers all the time. Look for the fingers, y'all, and AI work. Yeah, this is going to put, like, stock footage spots out of business. Yeah, for you just to be oh, able yeah. to get the shot that you need yeah, for something. They're done for. Because this is what you would pay a stock website for, for most of these shots. Yeah, man. Oh, that's quick. Oh, I can't wait till that comes out. <laughs> That'll help yeah. me with B roll for half y'all music videos. I can't get I'm the glad proper you're shots. not like, oh, that's it. I'm done. I'm throwing this no, out. Like, I, I that's did a, a good tool, man. <laughs> I may cut up part of this clip for. I did a, a like a segment of the show called uh, "If You Can't Beat Them, Join Them," because uh-huh. it's like all about I will not lose. But sometimes, like, there's no fight against AI. No, like, you're not gonna beat AI, man. <laughs> so I was documenting chat when chat GBT just first came out uh-huh. and like I was doing that was my one clip that went viral it was trying out mid journey okay. and like uh having it draw something up with a prompt or whatever mm. so I kind of documented and every three months I'm like yeah you know AI is pretty much ingrained in us now like I'll be able to go back and look at those episodes like yo can you remember life before you were using prompts I mean there's stuff with emails with social I'm like let me just give it the gist of something mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. have it like um, I trained it on my tone and everything really? like I'm dude if it's 20 bucks a month you're gonna let me compound my time like why not? That's worth it. That's yeah. what I say. It's worth it, man. Some things with the AI is just, I'm telling you, y'all, you better get on it. It's a tool to have in your toolbox. The AI is the truth, man. They can help you a lot. Don't be afraid to use it, y'all, for whatever. Look at how much time you save versus how much time your time is worth. 
Like everyone should have an idea of what they'd be willing to do in an hour, you know, <laughs> for their specialty or whatever. It's so true. true, man. That AI, man. Something that'll take me 15 minutes to write and do that in 30 seconds. Not even. It's beautiful. Love it. Uh I got I put you on the podcast clip. Have you tried that yet? Autopod? <sighs> Not yet, no. No, because the long the longest thing I've done was that Domino's tournament recently. So no, I haven't I haven't actually I think I haven't no, I haven't even bought the John yet. I think that's I think the one you what's the one? I think it's like three hundred dollars or something like that. Nah, nah, nah. Oh, I thought 30, one that was like thirty dollars a month. Oh, okay, okay. I gotta go back and look. I thought it was I like I might have sent you the the AI, the the one that was three hundred. Did I send oh, you the, yeah, the I think neat said, video that cleans up the pixelated yeah, out of dark footage? I think that's what it was. I was that like, damn, I, was crazy. Like, I don't I don't got the three hundred invest right now on this joint, man, but it, I'm definitely gonna look into that stuff. No, <laughs> you only get that when you have like the, well, let's say you went out on a production and somebody undershot certain clips. You can't redo the video shoot. That would cost, you know, thousands of dollars if you got a if bunch you of people. That. Right. Exactly. You know, if you got a bunch of people involved in the production. So Yeah, that would that'd be a lifesaver. I'm assuming. Yeah, if you could just um you know, that's clips. I've uh, bought it on a use case where we essentially had to have scrapped it like it like the A roll camera was underexposed. Really? So when you Bump the exposure and it gets all grainy. Nick, it's terrible to be pixelated. You run bad. this through it; it looks nice and smooth. You, you used it? It's yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. It worked good. Did yeah. it work? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> it takes footage. a little bit to learn how to do it, but you know, it it pays for itself once. There's it, exactly like I don't. People get like you said. You paid for sponsorship or, or for I don't want to say paid for likes because that sounds like cloud chasing but you've no, invested in your business yeah, expecting a return mm-hmm. for people are afraid to do that or invest anything when it comes to like business when it comes to my clients files when it comes to like you know having the the internet or the tools you mm-hmm. know people are like why do you spend so much on your laptop I was like <sighs> Literally, it pays it for itself in a couple it, projects. Exactly, and- man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta invest in anything, man. Uh, a, a a good thing when it comes to like, you know, I didn't mind paying for the promotion to try to make more money. Like the old saying, people used to say, "It takes money to make money." Just to spin back to the music, it works into that too. Uh, there's so many artists out here who are good but they refuse to put a couple of dollars behind their marketing promotions. And I just, it, it just bothers me. It's like, why would you not take at least a hundred bucks and pay for advertisement for that new single you just put out? Don't on iTunes, pay Facebook to promote it. Like there's a, there's a formula to things. And I just don't understand why people just, why are you waiting on cousin Jimmy to share it? Like why, you know, just, Put your money yeah. where your stuff is, man. Like, I promise y'all, if you put your money and invest in your stuff, you'll make some money back. It won't be what you're looking for, but it'll be something to probably keep. A couple of dollars is good to keep the momentum going. Just keep getting your money, putting it back into the pot and keep promoting your stuff. I don't know why people don't do that, man. I don't know why people are afraid to do that. I understand people don't have the means to do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's, I mean. But you don't have to spend a hundred bucks. You know, you, you can promote something on Facebook for like, what five dollars? Five dollars. Seven bucks. You can, yeah. Ten bucks. I'm not saying you're gonna, you know, get it around, but it's gonna get in front of more eyes than what you're sharing. You know what I mean? It, it, it's worth it to me. It's the moral of my story. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself if you're serious about something. Because I'm afraid to say there's a lot of people out there who are probably not gonna make it because they don't invest in themselves. People have the talent. They got the skill. They just don't invest. I, I don't know why. Well, I think it's. Uh... <laughs> There's no excuse in a day where everything is measurable. Mm. Like I can see if you buy a newspaper ad and you don't know who's going to read that or what it is. Newspaper ads are, you yeah. can't do that for five fifty dollars I Like that's, know. that's expensive. That's expensive stuff. But it's harder to measure unless you have a promo code or something in there to say, this is what you pay for Facebook sponsorship. You see how long people watched. You could figure out how to change your content to yep. hit a little bit harder. Exactly. Like maybe switch you know, something up next time, change a couple of keywords next time, you know how you can um, get better. with pushing your stuff. You know what I mean? You can also know, like if it's tied to a store, you can know how much money you made off what you invested. True. too, And that's the, the level you want to get to, you know, mm-hmm. Um, 
mic check. Oh, you go. I think I cut out for a second. Mm-hmm. Um, you can predict your return. And you know, if I put this much in, I can make this much. Yeah, like, I have the potential to make this or that amount. Exactly. I have uh, I know someone in a position where they're trying to figure out how much more money is on the table because they're they're making money, but their budget is shutting off at a certain amount of time in the day. So if we mm-hmm. had the more budget to be open longer, would that give us more of a return mm. than the money we're saving by not putting it in all day. Mm. I I try to like, I get people to really think about like assets and liabilities and like, you know, you really want to think about things in the opportunity cost. Like what does it cost me to not do this? Like I I think about how much quote unquote time I would have been wasted going live and streaming say every Friday. Right. But now like I would have built up traction for when I do reggae fest to not have to promote that so hard, you know, but I think that's going to be a vibe regardless, like whether it's streamed live or whether we just do this and have the, you'll be good because obviously I know about the, I know the numbers, you know, the numbers are there for the reggae fest. You know what I mean? It's not, I guess it's one of those things, like if it was like a festival, like, like our first year, where it's kind of like, we don't know who's going to show up. You know, we don't know. It could be 10 people, but the blessing of reggae fest is, you know, plug, plug here, you know, that we got multi, multiple thousands of people coming out here, you know, 12,000 people We're going for 15,000 this year, hopefully or more. And, um, <laughs> it's a blessing. Come out the reggae fest. Y'all come check out the podcast. Shout out to One Earth Reggae Fest. Yeah, man. It's going to be a vibe. Um, But just always pushing and growing towards something else. Like, you're allowed to put out failed content. You know what I mean? Like, people look... Some people like that. Some people like to see the flaws sometimes. You know what I mean? Sometimes. You know, depending. And it's all a matter of breaking it down. Like, there's a ton of people that won't listen to this whole episode but they'll see not. some clips or they'll see you know out of a full hour they'll get 30, <laughs> 30 seconds, seconds. <laughs> but that's enough for them to be like all right you know it, it happened like it, it builds a brand behind it you exactly, know exactly but that's cool so what do you got coming up next you got anything you want to plug uh, man uh let people know how they could reach out to you yeah um yeah um for anybody who doesn't know, obviously, uh, I run a company, A Direct Hitman Film and Photography. If you need video production and photography, obviously, you can contact my business, Google, or you can call or text me, 484 571 4156. You know what I mean? Um, as far as projects, uh, I don't have really anything, anything too major coming out. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with downtown school district, stuff like that. Just, just promotion of the kids, man, in the city, basically, is what I'm doing. Pretty much now, um, I got a call um, from my brother, Billy Dans of MOP. You know, I'm sure y'all, y'all know who that is. If not, they're the creators of Annie Up. Um, got some projects probably coming out in the future. I can't, I can't can't say too much on that, but, you know, some heavy hitters might be on some projects coming up. So I got some dope music videos coming up. Um, maybe, you know, I might have to do another hip hop awards show production. You know, I probably have to do something like that soon. Um, that's basically it, man. I just I'm just grinding, man. You know, whatever, whatever it takes, whatever y'all need is what I can create, man. <laughs> you love it or hate it? I used to hate it. I love it now, man. That's I, good. I, I, I've I've come a long way, man. Um, and when I say hate, never hate to the point of like I never wanted to do it. Just it's probably probably at the time it was probably like my clientele made me hate it more. The people I was dealing with made me hate it more because sometimes when you have those bad clients and they're there, let me tell you right now, there is something called bad clients. There's a lot of them out there. Um, when, once you learn to kind of target those people and get away from them, you'll start to love what you're doing, man. You know, it's, the, it's usually the people just stressing you out. Their stress makes you stress, you know, 250, 250 bucks is, their life savings and they're going to make sure you know that and feel that, you know what I mean? Um, and I just, <laughs> I know it sounds terrible, but you know, you just got to get away from those type of people, man. And, um, everything's been going great since man. So I love it. <laughs> That's fire. That's fire. That's fire. Yeah. That, yeah I mean, clearly you love it if you're creating all the content, cause that takes work to edit and put together and stuff too, you know, it does. Um, ton of time. That's most of the time to be honest. <clears throat> But I see like some of my viral stuff is just me 
recording the screen. It's not even the clean version with the audio and stuff. And so I, I could be trying too hard. I could be trying sometimes, way too hard. Right? Like, sometimes some people, I'm telling you, people don't care, man. But, you know, like a couple years back, you can say if your videos weren't the best looking or edited properly, you know, people man, nowadays, people, it seems like the flawed videos are the ones people are liking the most for some reason. You know what I mean? But um, it's like I always tell people, don't, you know, just don't put out anything. But if you got something that's worthwhile watching, like even you recording the screen or you doing something on the thing, that's worth it. Because there's a lot of editors out there who could learn something just by watching that. <laughs> like, oh, like, oh, he clicked that button. I never did it that way. Or, oh, he has his editing setup looks that way. It looks more streamlined. For sure. You know, stuff like sure. that, man. It's inspiring. People ask me to do that stuff all. People ask me to, to re, like effects clips, like music video effects. People ask me to do that stuff all the time. But. I don't do it because it takes time to do that. You know what I mean? It takes yeah. time for me to do effects and record it. Then to go back and editing. I'm already editing to show you the effect. Now I got to go back and edit that clip. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. It gets to be a headache, man. But um, I mean, I would say just, if you got something that you love and you do, put it out there. No matter which way it has to be put out there, you know, whether it's your face or whether it's just a screen, you know, people will engage if it's good enough, you know, so... Keep creating, y'all. Yeah. Creating, keep creating. I like that, man. I like that. That will title the episode that. If, I, if Chat GPT doesn't come up with something better, keep creating, y'all. Keep creating, y'all. But all right, man. I appreciate having you on the show, man. Uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate you having me on, man. Sorry, I, I'm a rambler, as y'all can see, man. I just talk in circles out here. It feels, it feels good, though, man. I enjoy this type of stuff, man. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. You know, if I can get on the podcast, I'm on it, y'all. You, if you got one, you want me on it, holler at me. <laughs> All right, for sure, for sure. All right, thanks. This is another episode of I Will Not Lose. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening to another episode of I Will Not Lose podcast. To support the show, visit I Will Not Lose podcast.com. You can subscribe to your favorite podcast player, share the episode link, leave a comment. Your contribution is greatly appreciated. And if you're listening in and can't see the QR code for donation, go to tothedesigner.com slash links, and there's instructions to donate up there. Thanks so much.